Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So hello, uh, welcome back. So uh, as you know, we were talking about uh, laminar premix flames, and in that regard, we were discussing the uh, we were discussing uh, at first uh, about uh, the laminar premix flame as a wave phenomena, as a chemical wave phenomena that propagates into the unburnt fuel layer mixture, and then we were considering uh, how to connect the downstream and the upstream properties of this wave. Okay, and then we did this all this uh, Rayleigh lines, we got this Huguenot curves and we found that at their intersection points which are given by basically Rankine Huguenot conditions as well as the Chapman Juga conditions, what kind of properties we can expect. But then we found out that this description except for the Chapman Juga point that is a tangency point is incomplete because it does not take into account the structure of the wave. And as a result, because the wave structure is not resolved, it does not tell you about the wave speed. So, the wave structure and the wave speed, these are very fundamental uh, uh, parameters that we must know. As such, the wave speed is essentially the, the wave speed is essentially the, the laminar uh, flame speed. And uh, to know that, we basically need to consider the, the wave structure and as a result, we need to understand the structure and the analysis of laminar premix flames which are also called the deflagration waves because they are propagating at subsonic speeds, all right. So now, uh, if you go into that, we, we were discussing these things that in the in the uh, hydrodynamic limit that is at the rankine Hugonio level, mm, we considered a flame sheet and then uniform upstream and downstream states and uh, then this was separated by a flame sheet. And uh, at the reaction sheet level, we considered that the flame had a preheat zone that is this is the preheat zone which is a finite thickness where the temperature increases, but still the reaction zone is very, very narrow, okay. And the reaction zone is uh, narrow uh, because it is uh, it, it arises from the fact that your uh, your um, uh, your activation temperature or the activation energy is very large, mm -hmm. and that is the result why and that is the reason why your reaction zone is narrow, and that is which justifies this assumption of a reaction zone being considered as a reaction sheet, and we consider the temperature increase uh, happening over a finite region. Okay, and we consider that this uh, uh, this uh, frozen uh, uh, this this part is uh, uh, the the reaction zone is essentially uh, for this part doesn't have any reaction because it's basically diffusion and convection controlling, and then we go into the complete structure at least in the analysis uh, at least for analysis uh, where we consider that the reaction zone has a much much smaller than the diffusion zone and it has because once again because of large activation energy and then mm, the convection in this uh, in this zone is uh, relatively negligible compared to the um, uh, compared to uh, basically this process is convective diffusive and we consider this process to be diffusive reactive. So, uh, in this structure that is uh, you have a flame here, um, you have a flame uh, sitting this is your flame. So, the flame is essentially stationary with respect to the reference frame. So, that means that the um, fuel air mixture must be approaching the flame at a speed equal to the local flame speed and uh, that is a planar laminar flame speed in this case and that the, therefore, which gives rise to this condition that is uu0 that is unburnt velocity must be equal to the laminar flame planar laminar flame speed and then uh, as it approaches the temperature should increase because uh, because uh, the uh, the temperature should increase because of the uh, because you have uh, uh, heat release in this so, uh, as the fuel air mixture approaches, uh, uh, it is uh, going to be burnt and that as we said because the activation energy is uh, very large, the reaction zone or the heat release zone is confined in a very small region and once heat release happens, then this heat is basically conducted upstream, okay. So, that is how the, the flame structure is uh, maintained that is, uh, so uh, the fuel air mixture is coming uh, from here and then it is uh, heat is being released here in this reaction zone and this heat uh, gives rise to the high temperature because it is essentially control conversion of enthalpy of formation to enthalpy the sensal sensible enthalpy as a result of which the temperature rises and once the temperature rises it is the heat is being diffused upstream to the lower temperature region and that causes this uh, fuel and mixture to heat up. 
right and uh, once again the fuel air mixture the fuel uh, mass reaction is essentially consumed at the reaction zone and that causes it to decrease and this uh, continuous supply is happening because there is no uh, fuel at the downstream okay so then uh, then what we discussed is that then the because of the large activation energy your reaction zone is confined in a very narrow region whereas your free heat zone is confined in a uh, much uh, much larger region and then uh, we can find out what is the relative thickness of the um, of the reaction zone with respect to the preheat zone Okay, and uh, mm, of course the system is conservative, and um, uh, as a result of that, your uh, your uh, we can we can arrive at this equation that is the that the burn gas temperature is essentially equal to adiabatic gas uh, temperature adiabatic flame temperature, but then it is the adiabatic flame temperature at the given stoichiometry, and that is where we deviated from a non-premix flame, where the temperature is essentially the adiabatic flame temperature, the stoichiometric adiabatic flame temperature, whereas that in a premix flame the temperature is essentially your mm, your uh, adiabatic flame temperature at a given phi. So uh, now uh, we are estimated at this. Uh, we estimated at this uh, things. That is, uh, that is what could be the to estimate what would be the relative thickness of the of the reaction zone with respect to the preheat zone. We found out the temperature across um, the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the temperature between the between uh, that is uh, the temperature at the adiabatic flame temperature of the burn gas minus the temperature at the start of the reaction zone, which is T X F minus, and that is given by this the T B zero square divided by T activation energy. And then we found out that the ratio of the reaction zone thickness to the to the diffusion zone thickness um, is, of course, here we don't uh, discriminate between mass diffusion and molecular and thermal, thermal diffusion. We assume that the Lewis number is essentially equal to one, and uh, under that assumption, that is the Lewis number is equal to one, we arrive at the assumption. We arrive at the analysis that um, the arrive at the conclusion that the reaction zone to preheat zone thickness is given by one by Zeldovich number, and of course, Zeldovich number is a very large quantity because of the fact that it is the activation energy is very activation temperature is very large as a result the lr by ld0 is much smaller than 1 so this is the thing and then uh, uh, very importantly we wanted to analyze that is uh, the burning flux can we at, uh, can we arrive at a uh, at a qualitative measure of the burning flux and for that we uh, said that you see in the um, uh, in the flame structure ahead of the reaction zone in the preheat zone there is no reaction happening so essentially it's a balance of convection and diffusion so if we can balance these two things so it is this is the convective side this is a uh, diffusive side okay and then if we can balance we get f0 is nothing but lambda by cp times L D0, and then once again we can balance between the reactant mass flux entering the flame, which is given by Y U F0, and the reaction mass flux that is the entering the uh, flux through the reaction zone, which is given by Y U times uh, reaction uh, rate W B0 times L R0, and then this is given by F0 is equal to uh, W B0 times L R0, and if we then multiply these two things, that is uh, sorry, this is this we multiply this uh, that is equation. Uh, if we multiply equation. Uh, um, 8 uh, and um, uh, multiply equation 8 and equation uh, 9 we get F0 square essentially is equal to lambda by Cp times Wb0 that is the reaction rate um, at uh, at the burn gas temperature. Uh, this reaction rate is essentially not the I mean it is essentially the uh, as we will see later it is essentially the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fuel uh, consumption rate at the burn gas temperature divided by Zeldovich number. So, uh, this is the uh, so we arrive at the conclusion that uh, that uh, this is essentially this F0 is essentially controlled by diffusion F lambda by Cp reaction W by 0 and uh, activation uh, uh, activation uh, temperature or activation energy and exothermicity which are given by Zeldovich number which contains both activation temperature as well as exothermicity. So, uh, then uh, then we discuss that okay, this is uh, qualitative and uh, see this is uh, qualitative we just arrive at like uh, as an order of magnitude essentially analysis by a scaling analysis. Then we have to do uh, more detailed analysis where we have to check that how accurate is this is this uh, uh, is this conclusion that uh, F0 square is equal to lambda by Cp times Wb0 divided by uh, Zeldovich number. So, uh, to do that, uh, to do that uh, mm, um, basically uh, we have to uh, do a more uh, detailed analysis and that you will see later um, in, the, in, the, in the following. Uh, but before that we we are once again contrast between non premix flames and premix flames and we said found that the burning flux uh, of the of the non premix flame is proportional to lambda by cp 
and it says it is diffusion dominating whereas for a premixed flame you see that this is uh, F0 is equal to lambda by Cp to the power of half and it is essentially diluted by reaction and uh, that is the um, thing that we get here. So, uh, F0 is essentially lambda by Cp to the power of half times reaction rate to the power of half which uh, we can say also that the burning flux is essentially a geometric mean of your thermal diffusivity though we uh, uh, the density is removed lambda by Cp times your reaction rate but it means that both the diffusion as well as reaction are equally important for a premix flame whereas for a diffusion flame or a non premix flame uh, your essentially it is controlled by diffusion okay so um, this was a thing that uh, that uh, F0 by uh, F0 is equal to lambda by Cp times reaction rate is the propagation rate of the burning flux uh, which is a proper which is a response of a flame which is the most important property of a flame is the geometric average of diffusion and reaction rates and these are the driving forces informing the flame all right and then uh, uh, we these are the summary that we have obtained that uh, this uh, this F0 square is equal to lambda by Cp times W0 divided by Zeldovich number. Okay. And then we looked into the pressure sensitivity and we found that the reaction rate can be said that it is proportional to pressure to the power of n. Uh, if n is the order of the reaction then uh, we can show that F0 is essentially pressure to the power of n by 2 and consequently we can say that um, because of the density dependence of SU which that is SU0, SU0 is equal to nothing but your F0, uh, uh, your uh, S rho u times F c u 0 is essentially nothing but your F 0. Mm, uh, the 0 basically comes because it is essentially standard parameters this the flame that we are discussing is essentially a standard laminar premix flame. It is a planar laminar premix flame without any flow non-uniformities and that is why this 0 comes at uh, standard parameters and also it is an arabitic condition right in, in a double infinite domain you have the flame. So, uh, these are the uh, parameters, these are the things and um, uh, these are the things that, that if F0 uh, that for pressure increasing your F0 definitely increases, but SU0 might go down if N is between 0 and uh, 2. Mm, and uh, the dependence of LD on pressure is more fundamental that is the reaction that is a um, flame thickness decreases with pressure because of, uh, because of reaction not due to diffusion. So, that is the thing. Okay. So, uh, uh, that is that is one very interesting thing that reaction rate actually causes the diffusion zone thickness to decrease and not uh, not through diffusion. So, that is one interesting thing that you should uh, take a note about. Okay. So, next uh, we go on to the analysis. Okay. So, once again our analysis is uh, basically on uh, the same thing that is uh, we are, what we are considering so far that is if this is our uh, domain is a one dimensional flame. So, if you have a flame here. Okay and uh, this uh, fuel air mixture is coming and the flame is essentially stationary. This is the basically the, the final boundary of the flame. So, where you have the reaction zone like this, uh, okay. uh, where you have the reaction zone like this and your diffusion temperature zone like this, mm, your species diffusion zone like this. Mm, uh, okay. And uh, so, then this is your essentially equal to your LD or rather LT0 because this is the thermal flame thickness and this we can say that the is essentially the mass diffusion zone thickness mm, and but this is definitely the, the reaction zone thickness mm, that we have and this is uh, TB0. So, this is basically as you see is a double infinite domain this goes up to infinity uh, plus infinity this goes up to essentially equal to minus infinity. So, here x goes up to minus infinity here x goes up to plus infinity mm, in these two directions. Okay and this is your temperature, this is your temperature and this is your fuel mass fraction. So, uh, once again to repeat um, your fuel unburnt uh, fuel layer mixture is approaching the flame from the left and um, uh, as because the flame is stationary it is uh, coming uh, uh, in this and then here the reaction zone is happening. Um, uh, the reaction is um, consuming this uh, this uh, this Mm, uh, this uh, this fuel uh, that is uh, uh, the fuel mixture that is being supplied and it is uh, consumed here as a result of which it is the, the heat is uh, being released and because the heat is released the temperature has risen and that is the enthalpy of formation has been converted to enthalpy of uh, so there is a sensible enthalpy and once it becomes hot then heat must be conducted upstream and which preheats this uh, uh, this uh, mm, this uh, premixed uh, fuel air mixture that is coming and that gives rise to this broader uh, uh, broader broader flame thickness but you see typically the flame thickness uh, is very small actually it's even it goes this this lt0 itself goes from about 0.1 millimeter to 1 millimeter for all practical flames at atmospheric pressure and as you increase the pressure that is in a aerogas turbine engine if you have a premixed flame uh, this uh, flame thickness should be even small so, which means that there should be your, your grid resolution to resolve the flame thickness should be very, very small. You should at least have 20 grid points or 15 to 20 grid points in this flame thickness to accurately do the simulation. 
Now, how do we um, how do we model this problem? Uh, we this is uh, the one dimensional equation. So, this uh, all the energy equation that we derived, we do not need to consider the momentum equation because the momentum equation essentially boils down to your u du dx rho u du dx is equal to minus dp dx and we consider the my that uh, that for order 1 acceleration your pressure gradient should be mm, order of for uh, you should be of the order of Mach number squared and here we are considering about uh, subsonic flames. So, your um, your your uh, your uh, pressure uh, gradient is really small, so we don't need to bother about the momentum equation and that the mass flux rho u is essentially uh, that is constant everywhere because of the continuity equation. Mm, so that is the uh, that but the momentum and the continuity equation boils down to uh, rho u is equal to f zero is equal to constant. Mm, so rho u uh, is equal to constant is equal to f zero, and that is why here essentially we had rho u and we can consider the energy equation directly. So you get rho u times C P D T D X minus lambda thermal conductivity times d2 d d x square is equal to q c w. q c is a chemical um, mm, uh, heat release rate normalized which was given by uh, divided by reference fuel. So, this is um, uh, when we write in terms of this thing and uh, this is essentially the heat release rate that we get and this is the species equation, this is the energy equation um, uh, that we have that is F0 times dy dx minus rho d uh, times d2y dx square is equal to minus w whereas this is the, uh, the this is the species uh, say we can uh, call this as y f essentially or uh, y uh, we uh, and uh, this y can be written in this form that is uh, is equal to essentially b c times y times c to the minus t a by t. Now, we can there is a point here if you could you can question that you see at least for the reaction to take place you need the fuel and the oxidizer. And so, there should be y f and y o. So, this y is essentially y f that means this is also y f, but um, here uh, we are considering basically if we consider conditions which are far away from the stoichiometry that is it is either lean uh, fuel lean or fuel uh, say it is a fuel lean condition. Um, then uh, the reaction essentially depends on the y f and uh, the y o can be considered to be essentially constant for this parameter and this y o constant can be absorbed within this b c and you see then the b c is given by this form. Okay. So, this is uh, then uh, what we have um, uh, as such uh, then uh, y o is can be assumed in the uh, we see here you see that there is uh, this is the y o dependence. So, uh, this but this is only valid this kind of assumption is only valid because you see this uh, your uh, it means that your y u would be consumed at a, at, a, at a great level it will go from y u is equal to some small uh, point uh, 2 or uh, point something mm, to completely near about 0 or it will change drastically whereas your y o if you plot it will not change as much it will have a much lesser uh, change because if it is a fuel lean condition. Of course, if it is a fuel rich condition then the deficient species become y f and then you would have to consider um, or the, the fuel mass fraction of y o. So, by that way we can only consider the temperature equation only one species equation by assuming that the reaction rate is essentially controlled by the mass fraction of the deficient species whereas the uh, whereas the, uh, the, uh, where the abundant species that is a y o in this case um, is uh, does not change too much. As a result, we do not need to explicitly consider its uh, dependence and this can be absorbed within the, uh, the, the, the pre exponential factor which is the modified pre exponential factor which is B c itself. So, uh, now um, then uh, let us uh, erase uh, uh, these things. Um, uh, now, um, then uh, we uh, can basically normalize it uh, uh, this this things and the normalization parameters these are the normalization parameters that is we can write uh, y tilde is equal to y by y uh, y u once again this normalization is done because this uh, then the equations become much more simpler it uh, get rid of all the pre uh, the different constants and uh, it will become much more revealing we can look into the different processes that are being uh, that are being uh, active without being distracted by the different uh, numerous constants so y is essentially y by y u that is the y divided by y unburnt that is uh, y u is equal to y at x equal to minus infinity uh, that is at the left boundary. Uh, your uh, uh, the other thing is x tilde is nothing but x by L d. L d is whereas your L d is nothing but lambda by C p times F 0 okay. and your t tilde is equal to C p t by q c y u. 
and with this normalization if you apply here uh, if we apply into this uh, these normalizations if you apply here we get to this relation that is uh, this relation becomes this and uh, that is d2 t d x square d2 t tilde d x tilde square minus d t tilde d x tilde is equal to minus d s c this is a collision term column number which is defined like this that is lambda by c p divided by f 0 square times b c uh, times y tilde the y tilde comes from this um, times c t minus t a tilde t activation energy tilde divided by t tilde ok. And then uh, you can normalize the y tilde also in a similar manner and then if you apply the then if you add these two together what you get is essentially this equation this is this equation d 2 t tilde minus plus y tilde this is once again like a coupling function or a decoupling function and uh, this is a uh, species uh, the diffusion term this is a convective term is equal to Lewis number then this is only true for Lewis number equal to 1 and this as you see that this uh, when you apply this uh, when you be the, the result of the normalization as we have seen previously in the coupling function also is that mm, this allows us to combine this species and the temperature equation very carefully and uh, very intelligently we can be able to get rid of this very nonlinear and complex reaction rate term, but of course the reaction rate has to be has to be included somewhere, so it is included in the temperature equation. Okay, so you see this one dimensional uh, one dimensional steady energy equation okay, is uh, written in this form in the in the normalized form, and this one dimensional steady species equation is written uh, plus the energy equation combined is written in this form, and whereas this is your uh, term color number. And the boundary conditions are at x equal to minus infinity your T u tilde that is your unborn gas temperature normalized is equal to T is your T tilde is equal to your T u tilde and your y u tilde y tilde is equal to 1 because y uh, is equal to y u. So, when you normalize you divide this to it you get 1 of course, at x equal to plus infinity that is on the right hand side you have your T tilde is equal to your T b tilde mm, 0 and your y is everything is consumed uh, because the fuel is lean and your y tilde is equal to 0. Okay, and at x equal to plus minus infinity, of course, uh, both at plus infinity and minus infinity, both the gradients. That is, there is no temperature gradient in either. Tem there is no temperature gradient. There is no species gradient, and both goes to zero. Ah, so now, uh, if we integrate this uh, this equation, that is, this is the first equation we'll consider. This is the equation number thirteen. If you uh, integrate this equation, we get that uh, t tilde plus y tilde is equal to this one. Mm, um, uh, it can be shown uh, in this manner I can just uh, write down. So, this is the, the two equations that you have um, d 2 t tilde d x square tilde minus d tilde d x tilde is equal to d a c 0 times um, y tilde times e to the power of minus t a tilde y t tilde right. So, this is the first equation you get. Um, and uh, the second equation is this form that is uh, d 2 t tilde d x tilde square plus 1 by Lewis number d 2 y tilde d x tilde square. Um, actually this is for Lewis number 1 equal to 1, but you do not need to set uh, Lewis number 1 right now. You can just get this equation still mm, minus d d x tilde you should do this on your own also and that will give you the confidence to tackle this kind of problems is equal to 0. Okay. Now, if you integrate this equation between this since there is no right hand side you can integrate this between minus infinity a to uh, plus infinity int integrate. So, you get d t tilde d x tilde um, uh, at uh, plus infinity which is plus 1 by Lewis number. Uh, d um, or if you just say integrate from minus infinity to to x to plus infinity on the two sides I will just integrate this is on the uh, when you integrate up to x this is what you get d x tilde minus t tilde plus y tilde. Now, if you set this to what happens in minus infinity this of course, goes to 0 both minus t u tilde plus 1 is equal to, but on the right hand side of course, again this goes to 0. So, on the right hand side you get T b tilde plus 0. So, if you just look into these things what you get is T b tilde minus T u tilde is equal to 1. So, this is a very interesting thing that means your burn gas temperature normalized is essentially your unburned gas temperature normalized plus 1. Of course, these are normalized quantities, but then this is the shows the order. So, there is an order 1 difference between T b tilde and T u tilde and of course, that is because of the heat release. Okay, that is the heat of combustion that is happening. Uh, so, uh, this is the thing and uh, now if we set uh, Lewis number to be equal to 1 
we can integrate this further and we can write that your uh, t tilde plus y tilde uh, essentially there will be a logarithmic dependence is, is essentially is equal to t b tilde plus c 1 times e to the power of x. Now, of course, uh, this uh, this t tilde plus y tilde cannot blow to infinity. So, if the c is either uh, either uh, it will go to either minus infinity or plus infinity if c is a non-zero quantity. So, this must be a 0. So, then it means t tilde plus y tilde um, is equal to uh, t b tilde and then it means that your y tilde at any point is equal to T b tilde minus T u T tilde okay, at any point inside the flame. So, this is also very revealing and of course, as you see that this boils down to the fact that if you put uh, T u tilde here, it becomes y u tilde which is equal to 1 and if you take T b tilde here, then it becomes 0. So, it satisfies the both boundary conditions uh, quite efficiently. So, once again, if we just uh, go back to this uh, analysis and this is what we are um, uh, what we want to show here that this is how you do it and this uh, T b tilde is essentially your T arabic flame temperature. So, that we got at boundaries of course, uh, this has to be uh, bounded. So, at you get this kind of an equation that and if you integrate you get uh, this y tilde is equal to T b tilde minus T tilde and then if you substitute that into the first equation into equation number 12. You see if you remember that the equation number 12 still had a, had this thing that is uh, this equation had this uh, this is the diffusion term, this is the convection term d 2 t tilde my d x square minus d tilde d x tilde. And uh, you see on the right hand side, the complexity not only arises in combustion on this right hand side, the combustion, this the source term the problem arises not only due to the fact that it has a nonlinear, that is uh, nonlinear Arrhenius type dependence e to the power of minus t tilde by t tilde t a tilde by t tilde, but also the fact that these equations becomes coupled through the fact that it be by the law of mass action, this y tilde arises. Okay, so uh, this becomes here. It becomes a couple set of equations, which is diff more difficult to solve. Uh, so uh, now, uh, once we know that y tilde is equal to t b tilde zero, t b zero tilde minus t tilde, we can immediately substitute this into that, and then this becomes explicit. In, uh, is becomes purely in t, and so d two tilde d x square minus d two d tilde d x tilde is equal to d a minus d a c times t b tilde zero minus t tilde times e to the power minus t a by t tilde. Okay, and if we plot this. If we plot this equation, this is uh, uh, if we plot this just this right hand side in uh, as a function of temperature, this is what you will get. That uh, the if you just uh, do not uh, have this part, um, which this, this part essentially comes from your y tilde. Okay. So, if you just plot uh, this part, so you see as T u increases to T, uh, T, T b, so um, this one increases and it rapidly rises. And this rapid rise is once again due to the fact that your T a this is large this is a large quantity much much greater than uh, this is much much greater than 1 T a tilde by T tilde and that is why it rises like that. But then if you plot sub, uh, plug in the y dependence you see the y dependence is linear in y in T tilde and that decreases linearly with T. So, this goes down like this. Okay. So, then if you couple these two things of course, if, when it goes to 0 at T b tilde then this also must come down, down to 0 and then the reaction zone which is the right hand side becomes a structure like this. Okay. So, uh, you see in temperature space it gives a very revealing thing that is in uh, this this function that is your reaction or the consumption uh, or, the, or, the, or this reaction rate of the, the of a given species or, or the reaction rate the species independent reaction rate they are just coupled by a proportionality coefficient. So, these two things are essentially uh, mm, becomes uh, just a coupling between uh, these two terms uh, this T b tilde and T tilde and which shows that it rises rapidly because of large activation energy, but then it goes down because your species has been consumed because of the reactions. Right? So, this tells you even in temperature space why this, uh, this reaction the right hand side must be a very, very sharp and a very thin and a sharply rising function. So, this is uh, very important. Okay. And this is also a, some, something like a decoupling or a decoupling function that we used. Now, there is something uh, very important in combustion in premix flames called the cold boundary difficulty. Now, what is that? Now, so, this equation that we got here that is, is basically the, the energy equation that we have got here is essentially d 2 t tilde d x tilde square minus d t tilde d x tilde is equal to minus d s is 0 uh, d s e reference conditions times y tilde times e to the power of minus t a by t. Now, at x equal to minus infinity, of course, it should be satisfied. This equation is satisfied between x equal to uh, between x equal to uh, minus infinity to plus infinity, right? So, at minus infinity, you see that this term is equal to zero. This term is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but then the problem is that 
uh, because uh, of course, there cannot be any gradients at minus infinity, but you see that on the right hand side definitely this is non zero, uh, this is not equal to 0, this is not equal to 0 and this quantity is essentially e to the power of minus T a tilde by T tilde, it is small because your T a tilde is much much larger than T tilde, but it is still not exactly equal to 0. So, on the left hand side you have exactly 0 quantities, but on the right hand side you have non 0 quantities. So, essentially this is a problem that is um, uh, that it is uh, uh, the, the RHS is uh, the, this even though the left hand side is equal to. So, the problem is that the left hand side of this equation at uh, x equal to minus infinity your LHS is equal to 0, but your RHS is not equal to 0. So, then it means that there is some problem and the problem arises because of the fact that this um, this reactions even though this temperature is small that theoretically there uh, even though the, the theoretically it suggests that there has to be because of the Artenius dependence there has to be some reaction going on, but which is not true. And uh, the thing is that what the problem is that um, at x equal to um, uh, even at uh, x equal to minus the problem is that even if some small reaction is going on if the f if the mixture is starting from x equal to minus infinity. Uh, so, it means that it has infinite time to arrive at the flame location. So, in infinite amount of time even if there is small reaction rate then uh, then uh, the entire fuel will be consumed by the time it arises at the arrives at the, um, at the flame location which is really not physical. So, on the right hand side we do not have a such a problem because on the right hand side you see um, this problem is alleviated by the fact that uh, it is it is solved by the fact that yes this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, but uh, this is also equal to 0 from the so that the hot boundary there is no such problem as such. Um, but on the, so on the left hand side or left boundary what people do is that uh, they just set this reaction rate to be 0 until or under some particular temperature or this ignition temperature is reached and that is how this problem is solved. So, this difficulty exists for many steady state problems with premixture at ambience and that is reactive ambience is infinite time to react. So, all the reactions should be reactants should be reacted before arrival of the flame um, and which traces to the unphysical posing of the problem. Okay, so, record says that we artificially suppress of the reaction term the reaction term at x equal to minus infinity and uh, we, uh, in asymptotic analysis the rational freezing of the reaction at x equal to minus infinity happens due to the large activation energy. Okay. So, uh, this is the thing and then uh, we will uh, what uh, we will move on to is the fact that we said that uh, we arrived at this <laughs> thing that is F0 by just scaling analysis we arrive at this uh, ana with this uh, argument that F0 is equal to lambda by Cp uh, times uh, times Wb0 that is a that is the species concentration of the reaction rate at um, uh, reaction rate at unburned gas temperature uh, at burned gas temperature uh, um, at a very high temperature and then uh, then uh, uh, of course, uh, then we arrived at the fact that uh, uh, the we, we got it uh, this thing that is uh, it was divided by uh, Zeldovich number right. So, this was the thing that we arrived. Now, we will see that uh, does this really is true. So, this can be analogous to the fact that when you do a boundary layer analysis and fluid mechanics you do first a scaling analysis, but then you do a more detailed analysis to see whether that is really true or not. This uh, say for example, you get the boundary layer thickness to be x by Reynolds number to the power of uh, x by square root of uh, Reynolds number right. So, um, uh, this uh, so, you have to uh, see that uh, whether um, uh, that is uh, your delta flame th your boundary layer thickness delta is x is, is equal to x by R e x square root of R e x right. So, eventually the delta grows as x to the power of half. So, uh, that you can uh, this result that result you can arrive from uh, scaling analysis, um, but uh, then uh, you still do a detailed analysis to ensure uh, to check whether that uh, scaling analysis result that you have got is whether it is correct or not. So, um, similarly here we will do a more detailed analysis which is called the Frank Kamenetsky or Zeldovich analysis uh, which was uh, done by Frank Kamenetsky and uh, uh, Zeldovich um, uh, to basically determine this burning flux which I have said is the most important thing in premix flames. Okay. So, um, uh, we will uh, ni next embark to this embark on this uh, uh, Frank Kamenetsky uh, Zeldovich analysis to arrive at a very rigorously we arrive at a burning flux for uh, laminar premix flames. So, that will be taken up in the next class. Thank you.